Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Devil with White Wings, and welcome to another episode of Hot Talk. Now, today, of course, is May the 13th in my country. It's May the 12th, pretty much everywhere else. And, of course, the new Kael'thas patch is out! So, this video is going to look at some of the changes that have come through, some of the big ones that we've been looking forward to for so long, and some of the ones that we haven't been asking for, which are really good quality of life improvements. So, let's get to it. First of all, they have fixed some of their performance issues, apparently. Um, some graphics options have been improved. I, I can't say yet. <laughs> like, I'm going to need to play it. I'm going to need other people to play it and figure out how much this improves it for people on lower end systems, especially. One little PSA that I have to give here is the improved graphic settings auto detection. After installing this patch, when you boot up HOTS, it will automatically change all of your graphic settings. So if you had specific graphic settings set up, you're going to need to set them up again. Personally, I'm going to have to go through a whole new round of testing to make sure that my settings work good with my recording software. But, you know, you can't have everything. Uh, there's updated performance notifications. So now when you are having some kind of issue, the game will be slightly smarter about informing you of what that issue is. If your graphics card can't handle the settings that you're at, it will tell you it's a graphics problem. If you're having bad, uh, poor connection to the Here's the Storm servers, it'll tell you it's a connection problem. So much better than our old, just like generic flashing icon of something's going wrong. Here is of course a new hero, Kel'thas Sunstrider. He is an assassin who focuses on AOE damage and like high enemy team damage, a lot of which activates after a brief delay. It's, it's an interesting way of doing it. It's kind of funky. And his trait, interestingly enough, Verdant Spheres, is an activated ability with a six second cooldown, which will empower his next ability, basic ability used. It's pretty cool. Um, Living Bomb, for example, it makes free to cast and uh, have no cooldown. Sweet. <laughs> That's all I got to say there. Um, a lot of art has been updated uh, in a lot of places. The game looks amazing. Like every single time there's a new patch, I just go, whoa, okay. This this game looks like a real game now. But, um, I'm not going to go over most of this stuff, but very important here. New mount. Diablo now has the Terror Charge mount where he runs around on all fours like a dog. It's perfect. Hey, Diablo, yeah, go, go fetch the paper boy, do it, do it. no, no, Diablo, that, that's a Tyrande, no, uh, thank you, Diablo, uh, there's a good boy. Moving on, uh, in the shop, the, um, a lot of this stuff I can't really comment on too much, price changes don't really, like, Candy King Mirrodin skin changed its price. Cool beans. Um, Mirrodin mains will maybe be excited about that if they don't already have it. The price to create a new team for Team League has been halved. That's nice. <laughs> and uh, the starter model has had a seven day stim pack added to it in addition to what it already does. Now, for those of you out there who are upset and going, I already bought a starter bundle. Don't worry. As soon as this patch has gone live in all regions, so that will be sometime tomorrow when Europe comes back up, Every account that has purchased a starter bundle will have the starter bundle 7 day stim pack activated. So as soon as you log on tomorrow, your 7 day stim pack will start ticking down. So if you have no plans on playing the game for the next like 4 days, do not log on tomorrow to like check your heroes or see what your daily quests are. Just, just leave it alone until the next time you log on looking to play. Because as soon as you log on, that's when your stim pack's going to start ticking down. We saw this already when they added the 7 day stim pack for reaching level 15. Or was it level 10? I don't remember. But um, yeah, just make sure that if you're not going to play for a few days, just don't log on until you're ready to play. That's, that's my advice there. A lot of uh, sound has been changed in a few different areas, most notably on a couple of skins. Your Country ETC now plays country music. Cool beans. And Lurkablo Diablo now has a whole new voiceover set entirely consisting of Murloc noises. This is going to be my new only 
<laughs> possible Diablo skin. You'll never see me playing Diablo as anything else. Uh, the user interfaces had a lot of changes. A whole bunch, but here is the most important thing. Hero and player progression, upon reaching level 25, all heroic abilities and all talents will be automatically unlocked for all heroes that have not yet progressed to hero level 4. Woo! Finally! They took away the talent gating! Ah, oh, That's so good! So at long, long, long last, all of us who have been calling for the removal of talent gaining are going to get our wish, assuming that we've played enough game, enough of the game, come on, dude, get, get your head in the game, assuming that we've played enough to reach player level 25, which is not hard, don't complain about it being locked into level 25, in the time it takes you to reach player level 25, you'll get, like, or heroes to level 5, maybe? Like, come on, it's not that hard. <laughs> There's been a lot of changes to the in-game UE. Um, some minor changes to the hero select screen. Importantly, in the hero select screen, when you're getting ready to play a game, it will tell you on each hero what daily quests they can contribute towards that you currently have active. So good. You can just mouse over, look for any hero that has like two glowing gold things and go, I'm going to play as this guy. That's what I'll do. I'm going to play as this guy. There are now new portraits uh, upon reaching 40, 30, 20, 10, and 1 in Hero and Team League. Cool beans. The shop has been upgraded significantly. It is so much more useful now. The layout just works a lot better. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, the featured item for every single tab now displays properly on over on the left in a nice big window if that's what you're in for into yeah. battlegrounds have been tweaked a little bit now talents i am going to go over these so quickly a lot of these i just don't understand enough to really inform you of how they change these uh, heroes but these generic ones i can do so clairvoyance has been buffed it now breaks units out of stealth instead of revealing them so units like Nova, Zeratul, and others will need to reapply their stealth after being revealed by Clairvoyance. They'll have to leave this area of effect and then apply their stealth. Orcs attack has been buffed. Um, once every 10 seconds, it will increase your next basic attack uh, damage by 75% instead of 50. Still not a great talent, but it's some. Um, follow through has been buffed. So after using an ability, your next basic attack will do 40% increased damage instead of 25%. Healing Ward has been nerfed. Uh, it now has scaling health throughout the game, but it can be hit by pretty much everything. So positioning your Healing Ward is super important. Ice Block can now be cancelled so that people who have Ice Blocked to save themselves from you know, deadly damage will be able to cancel it immediately and then get back in the fight. And Promote has been buffed, but no one ever uses Promote. Uh, Nova has had a slight buff. I don't think it changes her meta all that much. Raina has been buffed reasonable a bit uh, across the board. I think Raina's still in just as good a position as he used to be. Abatha's backdoor has been just completely removed, pretty much. He just can't backdoor anywhere near as well as he used to. So don't look at that as a viable strategy for him anymore. But in response, they buffed his stab damage slightly. Asmodan has had his trait buffed. It now lasts for the full 30 seconds of its cooldown. It's cool. Uh, doesn't really change his meta at all. Gazel, on the other hand, has had a number of changes. Uh, mainly, his turrets have been made cheaper, but you can now only reach a maximum number of three stored charges instead of four, which you used to be able to. That was pretty good, but now, not so much. They've tweaked the way um, Rocket Turret XL works. So instead of targeting everything in a circle around whatever the uh, turret you're shooting at, it will hit everything in a cone. Just that simple. And long range tur turrets have been buffed slightly. Death Laser has had a number of changes. Its damage has been slightly reduced, its cooldown has been slightly reduced, its mana cost has been reduced, and it now fires and charges significantly faster. This... I, I don't even... Like, hard to say. I think... I think some death laser builds might become more viable now that you can charge it, channel it a lot faster. But it's 
It's so hard to say. It really is. Uh, Explodium Charge said its mana cost increased slightly, and some talents have been shifted around, but largely they haven't changed all that much. Gravel Bomb now triggers slightly faster. That's actually kind of big. Fifth of a second faster doesn't sound like much, but Gravel Bomb has always been kind of annoying because the spell effect happens, and then enemies get moved by it. It's was incredibly frustrating to me to see Gravel Bomb work and then have it not hit anything because technically Gravel Bomb activated slightly after the spell effect for Gravel Bomb. Frustrating is all hell. But now the spell effect will happen at the same time as the actual spell. Much better. Uh, Murky now spawns an egg at the start of the game and every time he is killed uh, while his egg is killed, he will spawn an egg in his nexus when he respawns. Not a big deal. Uh, it doesn't uh, put his spawn egg ability on cooldown or anything. Basically, it just means that new players to Murky will no longer be punished at the start of the game for forgetting to put an egg down. Cool. Uh, Sylvanas has a new talent replacing follow through, which is basically the old follow through. So she hasn't changed at all, effectively. Lost Vikings have had their nerfs brought in. Uh, jump has had its cooldown increased. Longboat Raid will now stun them if it is killed. And play again has been slightly buffed by giving it a heal to all active Vikings. Woohoo. Zagara's Infest talent has had its duration increased. I honestly don't know what that means. Rhaegar's healing totem has been nerfed. It is now basically just a healing ward. And his Farsight talent uh, works pretty much the same way as Clairvoyance, although I understand it's on a slightly lower cooldown. Tassadar's Oracle trait now works slightly quicker. That's fun. And new Rex beetles have been fixed. <sighs> Thank you. God, I've been looking forward to this for so long. Anubrax beetles have been a bone of contention in the community for so long because they are the dumbest motherfuckers alive. You would be fighting in the middle of a group of five enemy heroes, hitting them in the face, spawn a beetle, it would walk away and find the nearest lane. It... <laughs> so bad. They have now been fixed. Essentially, if you're fighting something, the beetles will lock onto whatever you're fighting. If you're not fighting something, they will try and find something near you to fight. So if you're preparing to go after, say, a bruiser camp, they will find it because you're close enough to it to activate their AI. And once they've locked onto a target, they will stay on that target until it dies or becomes untrackable for some reason. Usually through teleport or becoming um, immune to damage, that kind of thing. He's also had the casting delay on his Q completely removed, and the one on his burrow charge reduced significantly. So Anubrak is going to shoot up the rankings in the next few weeks. He's going to be used a lot more. He's always been a good tank, but his beetle AI was so frustrating that people tended not to use him purely for that reason. I have a couple of builds of Anubrak that don't really focus on the beetles at all, and they were really strong anyway moving along chen uh when he hearths back into the nexus his brew will be fully restored cool beans and his storm earth and fire heroic that almost no one uses has made it so it's slightly more visible to the enemy team when he's immune to damage that is all diablo has had a whole bunch of changes that i'm not going to go over uh it seems to me like he's been nerfed in some ways and buffed in others that's all i can really say his overall health has been very slightly nerfed a few of his abilities have been slightly nerfed, but also buffed. It's, it's really, it's so hard to say, just looking at a list of abilities here, exactly how he's going to kind of come out in the end. ETC is the same. He's had a lot of things nerfed, a lot of things buffed, a lot of things changed. Really funky changes. Uh, Muradin has a new talent, which can enable him to do a ton of damage to one player. Uh, basically, after level 16, if he takes this talent, all of his basic attacks will deal 75% additional damage against targets that are rooted, stunned, or slowed. And if you know Muradin, you know that if, he's, that if he is fighting something, that thing is rooted, stunned, or slowed. Pretty much all the time. Moving on. Sonya's had a bunch of changes. We're going to get Wolf Soul on in a future video to talk about these changes and exactly how they've changed her. She seems slightly better to me. Can't really say for sure. But I am told that one or two of her builds may have been highly nerfed. 
There have, of course, been a whole bunch of bug fixes, but we're not going to get into that now. For now, we're going to get into the game. Hello, Kael'thas. How are you doing today? Ha ha. Look at these sweet ass abilities. Alrighty then. Now, we're not in here to look at Kael'thas in particular. We're here to look at these talents. Look at them. Look at how we, we can tell what they do, sort of. So, at a quick glance, we can look over here and say, Oh, this is a new passive ability. This is something that upgrades my Q. This is something that upgrades my E. This is something that upgrades my trait. Thank you, Blizzard. <laughs> That's so much easier to glance. And this right-hand side of the talent tree is so much closer to where the action is. Oh, so good. Ah, just thank you, Blizzard. I love you. I love you so much. Now, let's take a quick look at a few of the UI changes that have happened. First of all, this is the new kind of hero shop menu screen. We can clearly see where our abilities are, what they do. We have our basic abilities, our heroics and our trait. They're color coded. They have their, um, their hotkeys. Mm. Mm, I love it. But if we go back to the shop, as you can see here, this is the featured items page. We have our featured item of this category over here. As we scroll through, you'll see that they are all Kael'thas, except for the mount, of course. But, uh, yeah, this is... A... Look at this! I love it! Uh, all of these uh, work exactly the same, but we have a slightly different kind of menu to look at here. So if we go hide earned, very good. God, I really need to pick up Diablo. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to it. Um, I wanted to quickly talk about some of the less obvious changes. Uh, these, This area up here in the top right is larger than it used to be, especially these kind of uh, team boxes that we have here. That's going to make it slightly better for streamers who want their stream to be able to see what the hell's going on. Uh, daily quests have not really been changed at all in how they look, but if we go to options and graphics, as you can see, this is what the game has auto-selected for me. Extreme! But um, I'm going to have to change all of this for my actual recording when I'm recording gameplay because uh, a few of these things tend to fuck with my record. Most of things like indirect shadows. But I wanted to show here under Observer and Replay there is now this interesting little drop down menu for Observer Interface. Determines which custom interface file will be loaded when watching a replay or entering a game as an observer. There is of course only default here, but I'm really intrigued by this. Will I be able to have completely custom UIs for when I'm in, like, watching replays and spectating people's matches? If so, that's amazing, and I need to learn how to make them immediately. <laughs> so, the very last thing we can look at today is the play menu. As you can see, this particular page has not changed at all. This page looks like it hasn't changed at all, but if I hover over Tychus here, look, two of my three daily quests can be achieved by Tychus. At a glance. So good. Thank you, Blizzard. Ugh. Just making the daily quests easier to spot how they work. Thank you. Just thank you. <laughs> so that is going to be all for today, ladies and gentlemen. This video has already gone on way too long. I hope that you enjoyed it, at least. Um, Hopefully it's been slightly informative. A few of the changes that they added were a bit sneaky and not really informed, like the community was not really informed all that well about them prior to this patch. But I am super excited. I've already picked up Kael'thas as you've seen and I'm going to be playing so much of him over the next few days, really trying to get to grips with exactly how he works. But I gotta say, just looking at how he does in like the try mode and what his abilities do, it looks like a lot of fun. So, that'll do it for me for today, ladies and gentlemen, because my nose is about to literally fall off of my face. It is so cold in here. But I will see you all in the Nexus. Bye-bye now. Have fun.